Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm a product manager at Sentry. Over the last few months, the team has been busy building the latest addition to the Sentry platform, Metrics. Metrics are one of the key signals in observability. They help you track data points about your application over time to identify any slowdowns, bottlenecks or other issues that can harm your user experience. While pure tracing exposes issues in your code to aid in troubleshooting a user impact, Metrics let you observe the user-facing outcome and detect problems right at the interface to the user. In this way, tracing and metrics complement each other to help developers manage their applications in production. While Sentry gives you a range of metrics out of the box, even the best automatic instrumentation won't fully capture everything you will want to measure in your application. That's where the ability to define your own with Sentry metrics comes in. Here's an example of how Sentry metrics work together with traces to help you find the root cause of a common problem. This is a React app that provides a funnel to let users order some swag. They arrive, fill out the form and submit, which triggers a call to a backend sending the order to a third-party fulfillment service. If the funnel is broken, my company loses money, so I decided to instrument my checkout flow with a custom metric that counts the number of users reaching each step. This is a simple measure of health of the flow. And this is the result in Sentry. You can see that I'm reporting the number of users that reach each step. Home, address, and success. And naturally, some users drop off from one step to the other, yet the ratio is pretty stable. Just having this data visualized so that you can explore it is immediately useful. In this case, I can spot check my workflow to see if it is healthy. Of course, you can also alert yourself or your team if any part of the data gets out of whack. I'm now going to create an alert that should notify me if there is a 20% drop-off on the last step of the funnel. Coming soon, you will also be able to alert on ratios like a drop-off relative to the number of users that reached the previous steps. A few days later, an alert fires and it tells me that the success rate dropped off a cliff. So I'm going into triage mode. First I try out the funnel myself, and it shows that the final step takes way too long and even ends in an error. Likely it's a timeout. And looking at the metrics, I can also confirm that now only a few users reach the last step. Now with a generic metrics product, your triage would end right here and you would need to look elsewhere for more insights. When we worked with other tools, we felt frustrated that they would surface slowdowns and other regressions like this one, but not guide us towards the root cause. So while building our own metrics product, it was important to us to ensure that the data collected has all the context needed to help triage problems. And that's why along with metrics, we show correlated traces, as you can see in the table here. It shows samples of traces that were collected along with the metrics in the chart. This means that the samples you see in the trace table now represent the regression that we are facing. From there, I can select one such trace and when I click on it, I get to the trace waterfall and this waterfall makes it clear that this trace is taking very long. And when I drill deeper, I can see the root cause. It's the third-party fulfillment API that is apparently having problem. I think I have to give them a call. So how did I implement that? For that, let's look into the code of one of my React routes. All I had to do is to add a call to metrics.increment using the Sentry SDK. As you can see here, I also added a tag that marks the step I'm currently in. What we used here is a counter metric, but we support a few more. Here's an overview along with the use cases. Let's start with distributions. A distribution records a value at a point in time along with the aggregation like percentiles, min, max, or average. Distributions are often used for timings that indicate the health of your application. For example, the time it takes to start the process or the health or turnaround time of a queue. Here's an example from our own dog fooling. It's the distribution of how long it takes our event manager to save an event. A distribution also gives you plenty of aggregation operations like percentiles, min, max, and average. The blue dots on the chart represent samples that were collected with this metric. And I can either use the samples table to select one of them or directly click on one of the dots to get to the trace details. 
Okay, back to the other metric types. We saw counters before. They represent a value that can be increased. Obviously, they are used to count things, like in our example where we counted the number of users per funnel step. We could also count the number of checkouts or button clicks, as well as cache hits or misses. I think it's important to note that while some of these counter values look like marketing metrics, they are in fact good ways to ensure that your last deploy didn't break anything important. Similar to counters are gauges. The only difference is that they can also be decreased. This makes them an ideal fit for metrics like active sessions or users, the number of items in a queue, or also typical process metrics like memory or CPU usage. And then there are sets. They let you store unique values. A typical use case would be tracking unique users or API consumers. You might still wonder when and why you would want to use metrics. First of all, you have to know that Sentry of course records all typical performance metrics out of the box. Think of transaction durations, web vitals, or error counts. Yet, as mentioned before, there are metrics that are specific to your business that tell you if your applications and services are healthy. By reporting such metrics to Sentry, you can connect such measures to the overall application performance. With metrics, you can also report your own dimensions to aggregate them. For instance, you may want to see the distribution of your component loading time split by geolocation and browser. This is all possible with Sentry's metrics. If you want to give this a try, metrics are available today for the following platform. JavaScript, Node.js, Python, Rust, .NET, React Native, and Unity. And we will extend to all our SDKs in the near future. We are still refining the product experience and we would love your feedback. Metrics is now in beta, so you can start using it today. Setup is super easy, but we will leave a link to our docs if you need more details. Join the discussion in Discord to share your thoughts and get inspiration from other Sentry users. We look forward to hearing from you.